Hello. Welcome back. Tactical Tuesday with Johnny Tiger on May 23rd, 2023. Someone asked me before, why is it that uh, someone who profi- professes not to be a grappler, uh, you are so uh, captivated with guillotine choke in particular. Why guillotine choke? What's so special about guillotine choke? Well, if you have been following our um, video, self-defense videos in the past few weeks, then you know that I personally find guillotine choke one of the more versatile uh, restraining, choking, grappling techniques out there. You can transition to other stuff, you can transition to takedown, you can transition to striking, and I think for me personally, there was uh, uh, the two most uh, important aspect of guillotine choke that I have mentioned before. It's one, you control the person's head, so you very much get that leverage advantage if you know what you're doing. And second, uh, when you do guillotine choke, you are not bound up in gra- grappling with the person. You're not in a uh, situation like if you're in a if you're doing a rare naked choke or a lot of other more complicated chokes. If it doesn't work, then you kind of are trapped. You you need to know how to get out of uh, that situation. Otherwise, you're kind of as much uh, a victim of the technique as the person. But guillotine choke, not so much because if it if you at, at any time you realize it's not working, you can easily just let go and jump away, jump back, step back, and push them away. Like, uh, you it doesn't require you go to the floor. It doesn't require you to sacrifice a lot of your natural mobility uh, to perform this. So I always mention this as a, a guillotine choke is one of the more practical. Uh, grappling technique in a self-defense scenario uh, and we covered that in the past video as well. Now again uh, as we do in every uh, guillotine choke episode if this is your first video in this series uh, and you have no idea what I'm talking about guillotine choke is when your opponent for some reason duck down and present their head to you. Eh? Maybe they're coming in to grab your leg, maybe they're coming in for a tackle, or maybe you just kick them in the groin and they bend over and you drop your arm over the back of their neck, come around the, wrap it uh, all the way around the front, and then bring your own wrist up with your other hand and arch your body, applying pressure on their neck and head. This is a very painful, very uncomfortable way to get choked, right? Not like any one of them is all that comfortable to begin with, but guillotine choke is it's just really bad. I really need to uh, take this uh, guy apart and restuff him because the legs are really wobbly right now. Anyway, today I want to show you guys another transition. <laughs> I look like I'm like trying to support a drunk friend or something, okay? You just stay put. Um, today I'm going to show you guys another transition from guillotine choke. We have talked about in the previous episode how to transition from guillotine choke to a rare naked choke, which is a very effective way, and the uh, and the uh, silat style uh, takedown, which is also very very devastating, very effective. Today I'm going to show you guys another one, okay? Um, you guys can see I put a belt on Wesley here because for this to work, for this transition to work, you need to be able to grab their pants or their belt, okay? Now, in most cases, that shouldn't be a problem. Even if they're wearing jeans, you, as long as you have something to grab, it's fine, right? Obviously, because this material doesn't really grab very good, so I have to put a belt on him. So. Let's say I go in, I kick the person in the groin, they bend over, and I get them under my arm for the 
getting choked. And I start applying the choke. Another person is rushing. Okay, let's say this is a really powerful person, and this is going to happen sometime, right? If the person is really big and just like strong as a bull, they're going to rush forward, rush forward. And let's say your footing is a little bit off. You're not going to be able to ground yourself. You're not going to be able to stay put. You're going to find yourself staggering backward, right? Okay, so in this case, rather than trying to fight this, we're going to use this transition that I'm going to show you guys. When a person starts pressing forward, rushing forward, and you find yourself in this kind of a uh, struggle, trying to hold them and try not to fall down on your butt, step to the side. Now, I'm letting go of my wrist. So my right hand is free. My left hand is still wrapped. My left arm is still wrapped around the neck. Okay. My right hand will transition from my wrist over to the belt. Okay. I'm going to grab either the pants, the shirt, or the belt. Preferably the belt. The belt is the best. Okay. Once I secure my hand around the belt, then I'm going to step through with my left leg i'm going to step through behind their leg this is when i step this is when my left hand will let go of the neck and from here i'm going to perform a very standard judo throw right once you put your leg behind their leg all you have to do is pull them tight against your body using the belt and throw right you can even apply a little elbow with your free arm because remember we just let go with our left our choking hand we just let go with our choking hand so this hand right now is not really doing anything so you can elbow right to the back of the head or neck or spine if this is a self-defense scenario now if you're just in class don't do that So, let's look at that again. Well, I'm going to use the other side. The person getting getting choked, I start choking, they start pushing forward. I let go of the choke, grab their belt with my free hand, and step and throw. Okay, it's that simple. The key is that belt. You need to prevent the lower body from moving much. Okay, the whole point of grabbing the pen, the belt, is to prevent the mobility of the lower body. And when you pull on that, most people will have a natural tendency to step backward. Now, when they start stepping backward, because you have a leg behind their leg, that's what's going to trip them and allow you to throw them like that. Okay? Nice simple transition from guillotine choke to standard judo uh, belt grabbing throw. I have no idea what the proper name of that throw is. It's been a long time since I did my judo, so I don't remember all the terminology. Um, but if you have done judo, if you've seen judo, that should look very familiar to you guys. Thank you for checking out today's Tactical Tuesday. We'll be back again tomorrow for some wisdom. Wednesday. For now, have a good night.